Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark McGinn with the LA Times Lakers blog, and welcome to another edition of Lakers Roundtable. The Lakers host the Denver Nuggets in the first round of the playoffs, so that means the esteemed Benjamin Hockman of the Denver Post will be here in LA. Now, Ben, usually when you're here, you're doing stand-up comedy with Metal World Peace, but he's got a six-game suspension now for throwing an elbow last week at uh, Oklahoma City guard James Harden. Is he still allowed to do comedy with you, even though he's suspended? No, no, he is uh, he's banned for six shows uh, as well, unfortunately. I'm going to have to fly solo. Oh, no. So how how, how does this uh, suspension impact you? Well, normally, Meta and I, when we do our stand-up comedy together, we have a, a give and take. So really, it'll just be me uh, asking the questions and then uh, having to answer them back to myself. It would be quite awkward. But <laughs> <laughs> but will you be able to adjust to it, though? It's a two-man show. It's going to be a, it's a two-man show done by one man. It's going to be weird. But, you know, I'm, I'm versatile, Mark, and uh, I, I will adjust. I, I will persevere. So how do you uh, envision Gallinari adjusting to this? This is actually a good thing for him. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, Meta World Peace does a really good job at uh, shutting down Danilo Gallinari. He's had just some awful shooting nights against the Los Angeles Lakers. My God, uh, well, what great news for, for Denver, at least for the first six games. If it goes to game seven, how uh, how bonkers would that be to have uh, Meta World Peace back in the mix? But yeah, Gallinari is one of the key offensive players for the Nuggets, so that, that indeed was good news for Denver. So, you know, back in the earlier games, I know obviously Gallinari had that incident, you know, with, uh, you know, missing that wide open layup. But besides that, I mean, uh, and I think that play involved Steve Blake chasing him down. But throughout the rest of the other uh, sequences in the game, what, what did uh, World Peace do to, to make uh, his uh, shooting effort more difficult? I mean, when you, when you look at the film, uh, World Peace, which is, it's been what six months. It's still weird saying that. World Peace. Uh, <laughs> We're getting. Does, we've been getting used to it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, he uh, he does a really good job of keeping his, his big upper body in front of Gallinari at all times and, and just rattling his shots and keeping him from getting to the basket. And if I recall, on the step in front of me, I'm here at the uh, airport on the layover. But I think uh, Gallinari was one for nine and two for nine in the two most recent games here in Los Angeles. So the Nuggets have gone 11 and four in the past 15 games. I know the last time we talked, uh, there's kind of a sense of uh, an uncertainty of what the Nuggets' identity was at that point. But since that, with this uh, really good finish, uh, what do you see this identity as uh, being for the Nuggets? Well, here's the thing: the Nuggets give up the second most points per game in the NBA, but lately. They've been playing really sharp defense. It's been fun to watch. And, and, and look, I mean, that, that's key going into this series. As we all know with, with Lakers Nuggets, it's size versus speed. It's half-court offense versus a team that wants to push, push, push. So if Denver can play good half-court defense, I think we'll have ourselves a series. We're talking with Benjamin Hockman, the Denver Post Nuggets beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Nuggets News, and there you'll get all the Nuggets news. And plus... <laughs> You'll see Ben's hawk cast. Now, the last one will look like you're shooting into what, a cab? <laughs> Basically, the hot cast is uh, one or two minutes of ridiculousness, uh, me videotaping myself and talking about the Nuggets in the NBA, but I seldom do it just in a standard studio. I normally do it uh, sometimes on the run, literally, like from the treadmill. Uh, I've done it, of course, from the back of a taxi cab, Today and uh, maybe I'll even uh, I don't know I don't know where I'll do it in L.A. A lot of maybe uh, any suggestions for some goofy places I could do my video in L.A. Maybe here's what I want to do I want to go do it by the star of Larry Hagman, my favorite actor of all time, down there on the Walk of Fame. Maybe I can coordinate that. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you since you are arriving here in L.A., are you planning on hiring some big shots or actor for these future hotcasts, or has it pretty much been the other way around, where you know the Steven Spielbergs <laughs> and James James Camerons of the world have just been knocking on your door and trying to get them to uh, get you to read the resumes? Well, look, I don't want to scoop myself, Mark, but I, I've been in touch. I'll just say this: I, I won't use his name, but I've been in touch with a director named uh, Let's just call him uh, Harton Forskazy. <laughs> and, uh, he, he and I have been discussing a possible hot cast for DenverPost.com for this series, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Okay, well we'll uh, we'll report it in a in a in a little bit and hold on to it for now.
So in this last hot cast, you mentioned that uh, Nuggets coach George Carl plans to pretty much throw the kitchen sink in terms of the defensive matchups on Andrew Bynum in hopes that that will slow him down. How do they go about doing that? Well, it's just, it, it's easier said than done, of course. I mean, if you look at Bynum's statistics against the Nuggets, uh, you could argue he's played better against the Nuggets than any team in the Western Conference this season, um, notably with his rebounding. It's been outstanding. So what will Denver do, like you said, they'll throw the kitchen sink and maybe the bathroom sink at him too. I mean, Coach Carl even mentioned Chris the Birdman Anderson, a guy who – who has played like five more minutes than I have in the past month? As a guy <laughs> who could, as a guy who can maybe even get some minutes. Uh, T, Timo Fey Mozgov, who I of course called Tina Fey Mozgov, uh, he, he, <laughs> has, he actually has had some good games, uh, or good relatively speaking, but some good stints against the Lakers in the past couple of years. But of course, you got to look at Denver's main big guys with JaVale McGee, Coast Kufis, Kenneth Fareed. And Al Harrington is the, the four horsemen that they're going to give the big guys a shot. So how's Al, how is Al Harrington's knee going? It's it's something. Poor, poor Al Harrington is, is playing with a torn meniscus. But you, you could argue he's he's been the Nuggets MVP this season. I mean, I guess you'd probably give it to Ty Lawson or Aaron Aflalo. But the fact that the, a reserve thirty something forward is in the mix for a team MVP talk is pretty. Uh, exceptional in, in regards to how Harrington's been playing. I mean, they call him Bucket. That's his nickname. He comes off the bench, and he seems to always make that first jumper right, right as he enters the game and averages 14, 15 points per game. He said his knee is okay, and he should be able to go. He rested in the last game, and because the series starts on Sunday, not Saturday, he's got an extra day. But with an injury like this, Mark, I mean, we got a guy who's just in a warrior, and it's going to be there, and he's just got to mentally – as tough as he is physically. Now, you mentioned Aaron Aflalo. Looks like this past month he's been averaging about 19 points a game. What's been going on with him? Well, here's the thing. He's been making shots. So <laughs> that, that, That's been a key asset to his game is the shots going in the basket. But when you, when you look at Aflalo, I mean, we're talking about a guy who made his name early in the league as a defensive player, and he's definitely not a flashy guy. I mean, when you look at the Denver Nuggets, you got Ty Lawson, you got Gallinari with his – model looks and his, uh, and his jump shot, and then, of course, Kenneth Fareed and JaVale McGee and their dunks. The flawless is kind of there. He's definitely not flashy, but he hits three-pointers at a high percentage, and, of course, he can get to the basket. And he, he, I'm, I'm not saying he's Kobe Bryant. He's got a little bit of a Kobe game. How so? Well, I mean, they're, they're they're both gritty guys. They both they're about the same body frame. Uh, they both like to shoot that that lethal three pointer that's kind of almost like a line drive jumper. And uh, and they and they both just play the game with with a passion. I mean, again, I, let's I don't I don't want to headline Hockland says uh, Flalo is Bryant or anything like that. Oh, I was but already they, writing that. <laughs> but but I but I will say that, that I guess if you looked at Aaron Flalo and said who is he patterning the game. Off, it, it would be Kobe being Bryant. Now, what's he been doing? I know, obviously, Kobe had his torn ligament in his right wrist and whatnot. But you know, earlier in the season, it, you know, he looked like he was making him work for his shots, held him to a pretty low percentage. What was he doing, given the circumstances, to make uh, things a little bit diff- more difficult for Kobe being Bryant? Well, I spoke to Flowers just last night about that very subject, and, and, and he says it's the team defense. He says that the Nuggets big guys do a good job, a smart job of, of helping out, stepping out when needed to rattle Kobe. But, but I mean, you, you look at you look at our guy here in Denver, Aflalo, I mean, he moves his feet at an incredibly fast pace for a guy his, his size, and he's, he's just a tenacious defender. I mean, you kind of hear that phrase thrown around, but I mean, he really is just a tenacious defender, a guy who takes pride in it and, and looks at a defensive possession as important as an offensive possession. Now, uh, talking with the Lakers, they are really concerned about uh, the Nuggets' depth and how just they're able to generate that offense and tra- transition. How does Denver go about taking advantage of those strengths? Well, it, it's pretty fascinating the way George Carl uh, handles his rotation and has all season. I mean, Denver's 10 deep, and, and they've got guys who 
you might not realize make a big impact you do. I mean, there's a guy named Corey Brewer who we remember from Florida, but he's been in the league for a couple of years not doing anything. Well, this year he's one of Denver's more important players because he checks in and he just, just sprints up and down the floor, gets a couple easy baskets per game in transition, long and lanky on the defensive end too. So Denver's going to push it, push it, and push it. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of a salt and pepper joke, but I can't right now. I'm a little tired. <laughs> but, uh, that lag catching up to you? I, I, I will tell you this, Mark. I'm a, I'm a karaoke king, and I've, I've nailed karaoke songs from California to New York and cities all in between. But probably the lowest moment of my life was when my cousin J.B. Hockman and I tried to do karaoke to push it and realized that we didn't know the words or the cadence and couldn't get by on our good looks with a microphone. It was a disaster. How is the Meta World Peace like as a karaoke singer? Oh my God, he uh, he he's kind of like Barry White. I'm sorry. Very, he's kind of like Barry White, very soothing and. Cool. Oh wow. Yeah. So I know that Pal Gasol's done that as well. He, he uh, after the uh, trade talks passed, that uh, he was at this UNICEF event, and he was uh, karaoke in the fray. Uh, have there been any discussions uh, with you guys and doing some <laughs> collaborations? Karaoke fray and admitting it that's that's something and it's and it's viral it's on video and when we talked to him afterwards he was so eager and excited to talk about how you performed with a live band that's pretty cool actually to be honest with you as a live band I'll tell you my best karaoke moment I told you my worst my best involves <laughs> Los Angeles if you will uh, two Los Angeles natives uh, Andre Young and Calvin Brodus. Uh, wrote a rap song called Nothing But a G Thang. And uh, I was in Jackson, Mississippi in 2006 covering the New Orleans Saints training camp, and I went to this country bar, and sure enough, I uh, I used my cojones and said, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this rap song at this country bar. And Mark, I nailed it. Really? It was probably you, uh, me. Was it you or was it a hologram? <laughs> it was me. It was me, but it was so good that they're, they're, they're in the works of making a Benjamin Hockman hologram rapping that song. It was a big moment in my life. I mean, graduating from college and, uh, you know, maybe um, getting a job were probably the top two moments, but rapping up in the G thing at a karaoke country bar in Jackson, Mississippi, was probably third. So, Benjamin, when you're out here in Los Angeles and you're not doing the karaoke and the stand-up comedy and you're watching this playoff series, what do you think is the X factor going in? Man, uh, I'm, I'm just fired up about being in L.A. in general. It's, it's, it's probably my favorite city to travel to on the NBA circuit. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Mark, I'm just excited about seeing all the uh, all the other reporters like yourself and I mean, all, all the folks from the L.A. Times and uh, some, of, some of the other fools around town. And how about the actual game? What what uh, what do you think is the X factor as far as uh, the matchup to watch? Well, but that, and we for the listeners, we did not discuss this in advance. But I myself am just finishing up this huge story for Saturday's Denver Post about the Nuggets X factor, and that's Kenneth Fareed, the rookie power forward. I mean, this guy can change a game. We're talking about a guy who didn't even play the first third of the season. And now when you when you look at his performances, I mean, he's one of the better power forwards in the conference. I mean, he's averaging close to a double-double. He's had nights where he's had 15, 18 rebounds, and half of them are on the offensive end. He can catch those alley-oops. He runs in transition. And, I mean, he's, I mean of course, now we wonder how, how that will translate to playoff basketball. But the, the thing I wrote about that was interesting is he played in a, in a if you will, a series, a two-game series, Two games in a row, the Nuggets played the Warriors. The first game, he was abysmal. 1.4 rebounds. It was it was a joke. I mean, so what did he do? He approached it like a playoff series. He he watched the film. He learned more about his David Lee and the Warriors low post. And then, also, he's fueled his embarrassment into, into fire, if you will. And he scored 27 points with 17 rebounds in just 24 minutes in the next Wow. Game. That's anyway. some efficiency rating right there. Yeah, I know, right? Unbelievable. Um, so how do you think this translate in, it, it translates into the postseason? I mean, obviously you mentioned his experience being a rookie. How, how do you see this carrying over into the Lakers? Well, I mean, I mean that, that's the question that I don't even know if Fareed knows the answer to, but George Carl said something pretty interesting when I was interviewing him for my big Fareed story that will be on Denver Post 
dot com, and, and that was that when you look at players whose skills or talents translate into the postseason from the regular season, a lot of the guys who thrive off energy and hustle are the guys who carry that into the postseason. And he mentioned Bruce Bowen, he, he went old school on us and, and mentioned Jerry Sloan as a player. And, um, but uh, that, that didn't mean anything to me. But but, it, but he, he, he talked about Bruce Bowen. He even mentioned Dante Jones, the, the former Nuggets guard, who was just an okay player, but he helped Denver win a playoff series against the Hornets a couple of years ago because Jones, with his energy and his hustle, uh, helped shut down Chris Paul and the Hornets. Now, an interesting dynamic from the Lakers' end is they have uh, a pretty talented point guard by the name of Ramon Sessions who also kind of has that playoff and experience. It's uncertain how that's going to translate. But uh, from the Lakers' end, he's been somewhat uh, struggling as of late in terms of uh, you know adjusting to the adjustments the other defenses have given him, as well as uh, his own defense. Uh, how do you see uh, Ty Lawson trying to take advantage of that? Oh, well, Ty Lawson, here's the thing. He, when he's at his best, he's attacking the feet of the defense, he's pushing the ball into transition, and he's shooting jump shots without any fear. And he's had some huge games because of that. Of course, people in L.A. follow the Lakers. Remember that one week where Kobe arguably got snubbed by the Player of the Week award because Ty Lawson won it. And, I mean, that, that week right there, I mean, he was playing some of the best basketball I've ever seen a point guard play. He was doing all those things I just said. Of course, he will try to take advantage of sessions uh, in these games by doing just that. But Lawson has shown that he can be a very up-and-down point guard. And there's some games where he gets passive and, and, and is passing too much. And you, you think that maybe that's an okay thing for a point guard. But what we've seen with Lawson is sometimes he defers too much and doesn't try to take over the game. And let's let's not forget that Nuggets don't have a Carmelo Anthony anymore. Lawson, he, he's got a real buzz. He's one of the top players on the team. So what feeds into him, uh, you know, either being aggressive or deferring too much? What what contributes to that? Well, I mean, again, he's, he's let's not forget, this is just his first full season as an NBA starting point guard. He's been in the league three years, but he was playing behind Chauncey Phillips, so he's still learning the game. And, and and he's got that mentality where he wants to get other people involved. He wants to get the coast coaches of the world, uh, their touches and such. But but so I guess to answer your question, I mean, there's times where he needs to realize that 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 final pass he makes, he might get it to a guy that's somewhat open. But it might have been a smarter decision for him to try to create a shot on his own than than force a pass to a guy that might be in an awkward situation, and not make a high percentage shot. And lastly, we're talking, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about a lot of the different storylines hanging into this Lakers Nuggets first round series. At the end of the day, what's your prediction on how this all turns out? Well, you know, what's funny is you and I did uh, one of these a couple weeks ago before the Meta World Peace thing, and I said the Lakers would win in six. But now, peace is out for the six games. So I think it's going to go seven. And you know what? Can I not make a prediction? <laughs> wow. I, I can't let you off the hook. Look, I mean, there's people from Vegas who are going to be listening to this podcast wondering <laughs> where they should put their money on. I know. I know. I, I, I'll just say this. I, I think it'll go seven. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of crazy storylines. There's going to be a lot of highlight dunks. And, uh, and we'll be in L.A. for game seven. And how much fun will that be? So seven games, you're not really sure which team is going to win. At the end of the day, what's going to determine uh, the winner in game seven, do you think? Well, in a game seven situation, you, you got to look at Kobe in the fourth quarter. And we all remember the famous game seven against the Celtics where, you know, our test basically carried the team for a lot of those early quarters. But in the fourth quarter, it was Kobe who made a couple key plays down the, squat, down the stretch. So uh, I think it's going to come down to a follow and the help defense on Kobe in this Game 7 that I predicted. <laughs> Those are the thoughts of the Denver Post Nuggets beat writer, Benjamin Hockman. Appreciate all your time, and uh, good luck with all your uh, ventures out here in L.A. in the next few days, the karaoke, hiring the director for the Hawkcast, and uh, pretty much anything else that comes your way. It's going to be a busy week. Always fun talking to you, Mark. All right, thanks a lot.